Oh, damn. Welcome to SNS number 3 final series. Right now the score is 0-0 because you just caught the first game. And it's good between two Korean players. Who would have guessed? Arthur and KSW. It's a spot on the top right. He's yellow, he's Protoss. He is Arthur. His opponent coming back after a very long hiatus. AKA like three weeks. He's blue, he's red, he is KSW. Also known as Singing Waffles, also known as Korean Southwest. Excellent introductions as always, Born. Thank you so much for taking the time to do that. Oh, of course, you're welcome. All right, ZVP. I think this is probably my favorite matchup in all of StarCraft, always has been. I just I... feel like there's so much stuff that Protoss can do and so many different ways that Zerg can react to it. It's just never exactly the same thing twice. I love it. Mm. Good point, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. I know none of these are Terran. I know that Terran is your love. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, this is shaping up to be pretty awesome. Yeah, so we're on match point 2.0, which is a bit of a weird map. Uh, just a little odd compared to the other ones that we've seen. There's no ramp up into your base. It's all just level ground. Um, if I understand correct. Yep, just level ground there. You have a little bit of a mineral patch you can mine to open a door for yourself later on during the game if you're walling off. Not something Zerg players do a whole lot, but something you might see from Arthur because he is actually using that patch. So, interesting, interesting stuff. And ooh, is that a ninja expand going up top left for KSW? Well, one thing that Arthur did do is he did pylon block the natural. So uh, as a response, KSW decided to build his first base up in the top left. Where it's so far away. So hard to defend. All right, so we'll put one point on the board there for Arthur, forcing that to happen. Well played, gets the full scout off, sees there's no spawning pool. Actually, there's a spawning pool. I always forget that. Spawning pool's there, just not on the screen right now. That's okay. No extractor yet, nothing crazy. Third base now coming down where the second place wanted to be for our friend KSW. Arthur is also going for that fairly early nexus, a bit of a forge fast expand, if you will. And both players just really going, sitting back for that macro. No one's going to do anything too crazy. No proxy hatches here. No cannon rushes. Both players doing what they can to make it to the mid game alive. And then we'll see what happens from there. Yep. Now the question is, Arthur, when does he get his gas? Should be soon. Yep, he gets it right now. Oh, yeah, there we go. Getting his gas. No gas at all for KSW yet. yet. Oh, there's the gas. I lied. He has that one with three workers in it. No big deal. Getting all that gas. Gonna go for, let's see what he does against Protoss with his gas income. And there we go. Immediately getting a queen. Likes to have those queens out, looks like, in both matches against Terran and Protoss. So no big deal there. And I think, are we gonna see a lair here? Gonna be lair or speed. Up to 56, 64. The suspense is killing me. I know. KSW, here we go. 100. Oh, I think it's going to be a lair then. There it is. There's the lair. Well played. So a lair, another queen coming out as well at that top left base. It needs that defense because it's a little bit farther away from everybody else. And there we go. Stargate being created for <laughs> Arthur. So early Stargate, Cor Corsair harass possibly. We'll have to see what he decides to do with that, but I like to see Stargate play against Zerg players. I feel like it really keeps them on their toes, really makes them get specific compositions to deal with it, decisions that they usually don't make against a ground army, and it can be a lot of fun to watch. So, all right, Hydralisk Den coming up, Zergling Speed being created or upgraded for KSW. Arthur making a Zealot, making a probe, getting more gas to support this Stargate play that he's going to do. And what else is in production here? Another pylon. All right, so nothing crazy. Here, yep, immediately a Corsair is built out of that Stargate. So these overlords better watch themselves. They're going to get blown out of the sky. You know, actually, I'm kind of wondering how KSW is going to be able to SimCity this top left base. I don't actually know. I imagine it'll be pretty difficult, though. Exactly. But if anybody can do it, Singing Waffles can, I believe. I believe in Singing Waffles. Mm, waffles. And okay, Zealot's gonna go up to the top left. Fortunately, and there are some there. 
Yeah, immediately die. Good job microing away the wounded Ling there. This is what you like to see. Keep those Lings oh. alive. Backing into a corner, <laughs> though. Nice. Amazing micro from Arthur. Takes out a couple Zerglings. Pretty much the best that the, uh, the Zealot could do. And does basically verify there is the third base there for the Zerg player. He did not actually cancel that. It is finished. So with that information, we're pretty happy. Meanwhile, Corsair flying around trying to find overlords that are out in the middle of nowhere, but I don't think there are many to find here. Uh, one is actually swooping up around... Where is this guy? There he is. Corsair heading up. Going to find that overlord, possibly. Good defense. Good hydro positioning. Oh, going to lose one overlord, though, unfortunately. Oh, overlord too far away. Three Corsairs. More on the way. And there we go, there's the Supply Block on KSW. This is what you want to do if you have those Corsairs. Supply Block the Zerg player. Do what you can to make sure he feels very scared to move out. And three of Lords are on the way. As well as another Hatchery, which is here on the top left. And uh, I kind of wonder, he might be going for five Hatch Hydra. Uh, at the same time, he's got an Evolution Chamber here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, help him with it, Sim SimCity. And a Viper well. Nest on Ooh, the Viper way, nest. too. Yeah. All right. So again, maybe we'll see Vipers. I don't know. Getting that speed upgrade for the Overlords again. Be nice to kind of move them out of the way where the Corsairs are. Getting Groove Spines for that uh, range upgrade for the Hydralisks. And Hydras pretty much, I think, are going to be the answer here nonstop at this point. Reaver being made, though, for Arthur. He recognizes probably going to see a lot of Hydras. A good response to that is the Reaver. Reaver is a good unit. Also, apparently, Arthur's most favorite unit. Yeah, turns out pretty fantastic. Again, more Corsairs oh. on the way. How big does he want this Corsair flock to be? You know what? He's going to make it really big, because I think he's going to go Sarah Reaver for a little bit. Ah. Yeah, he's got the um, he's got the Warp Prism uh, speed upgrade coming up. Yeah, the question is, does he research um, uh, Disruption Web? That would be really cool. That would be really good. For sure. So the Hydras are here. They're going to try to get in by taking down this pylon. They do manage to snipe it down immediately. And the Warp Prism doesn't want to oh, get no. too close. The Hydra. Reaver. Hydra. Huge hits. Takes a lot of the Hydras down to less than half health, but doesn't kill any of them quite yet. Interesting. So they need some time to regenerate. But they're heading back away. They say, we're not going to try to break down this wall while there's a Reaver back there. Just way too difficult to handle. And they're just going to head back on home. A couple more of their friend Hydras are going to come back on up. How many total Hydras are there? 28 Hydralisks on the field. That is pretty good. 31 now. So yeah, pretty much going to be nonstop Hydra production at this point. Getting the upgrades for those Hydras to keep them alive. And Evolve Spawn Locusts is on the way right now for that Viper Nest. We probably will see some Vipers. Yes, four of them are now in production. Plasma Charge being researched by Arthur. And that is the Reaver Scarab uh, damage upgrade by 25. That should actually be enough to one hit oh, a Hydralisk. Is once that happens. Sorry, what was that? Oh, we have an Eruptor on the map. And actually defend against nice. the Corsairs. Actually did quite a bit of damage. Yeah, look at that. A lot of those guys are down in the red. Alright, Eruptor. Pretty good units sometimes. Here we go, here we go. And KSW again, supply blocked because of all the damage done to his overlords. The Hydras are back at the front door of Arthur. Kind of poking around again, trying to see if that Reaver is still there. And the answer is yes, the Reaver is definitely still there. Really no way to get in there, unfortunately, for KSW. He's going to try, though. Getting a Lurker Den as well. Uh, Templar Archives being researched for a Protoss player. And built. Probably get some Storm out of that. And yeah, pretty much just a stalemate at this point. Hydras are out on the field. They pretty much tear through the Corsairs. Corsairs can't really do a whole lot at this point. Vipers are just kind of generating energy. We'll see what next is. Oh my god, I just had a sick idea for the Raptor on how to, how to redesign it. Anyways, back to the game though. Nice pick off with those Reavers. Getting quite a few drone kills. Yeah, pretty good splits though. Only seven drones have died. Yeah. So not bad. Again, more attacks down here in the main. Oh, the queen dies to the Reavers. All these drones are undefended. Run drones! Oh man. Three or more of them died there. Trying to snipe down that warp prism and note it. It's too fast. Is he gonna get caught actually? Uh -oh. It'll oh. Bite. Oh. Oh. oh, the catches are real. Oh. oh, KSW showing Arthur who's boss. KSW killing that full warp prism. Ouch, that hurts. You don't want to see that as Protoss for sure. But again, replacement warp prism is here. Do not cry, Arthur. You're going to be just fine. 
So Warp Prism and Zealot attacks. Moving on out. Again, Zealots do pretty well against Hydras. They have a lot of damage. They're very tanky. They're fast as well, and they hit hard. So immediately going to head across the map here to try to kill this third base. Responding are the Hydralists. They're going to try to get there, but man, those Zealots are fast. I think they might actually arrive before the Hydras can. Hydras just congregating in the middle. And yep, Spore Crawler gets taken down pretty much immediately by these Zealots. Reavers dropping in the middle, killing drones one by one. Not super effective. Drones trying to run away as fast as they can. And here come the Ooh, Vipers. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, actually. <gasps> the Spawn Locust! Oh, the Spawn Locust on top of the Reavers! Yeah, throwing down the Spawn Locust there. One of the Reavers is still alive. That base did die as predicted. Second base up here Holy also crap. explodes unnecessarily. But here we go. The Hydras have shown up. Can they take down this last Reaver is the question, and they do manage to get it. So they lost a base, but Arthur lost quite a bit there as well. There's some really big armies. Or at least that's a lot of Hydralists, I should say. Wow. Total number of Hydralists, 73. 73. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, wow. Big number. Yeah. All right, so basically at this point, Arthur needs to hold that third base against 73 Hydralisks, more and more in production all the time. Oh, big, big snipes. Oh my god, using Spawn Locust in the high Templars. Ooh, That's so sick. That was... <laughs> that and it one-shots him, too. Yeah, which is nice. All right, all right. So again, there are three Templar. I don't know if all of them have energy for Storm. Four Templar now, though. Okay. Getting a little bit scary for these Hydras. Good splits would be required to keep them alive. The Hydras say, mm, we're going to back on out. Can then send the Vipers in to try to get some more hits <gasps> off. Oh no! Oh, they're behind the army. They're alone. Dude, oh, dude. hey, oh, Viper. That's Viper. It. How much energy do they need? A hundred? That's actually kind of cheap. One, oh, 125. 125. Okay, that's more like it. So yeah. they're all waiting for that. Yeah, it was a great position, but actually burrowing a couple oh. lurkers here to kind of zone everything out. The Vipers up overhead, kind of taunting the Dragoons. All the damage going down on top of that canceled Nexus. And yeah, KSW's kind of holding on, waiting for enough energy, I think, to spawn mm. locusts on those Templars, but no, we're commits just a little oh, bit. A couple no observers, swarms. no observers. Yeah, a couple, uh, no, no observer. Oh, no. he's got a DT, though. Dark Templar right in the middle, going to try to kill all these hiders by himself. Can't quite do it. Oh, he might ensnare the, uh, the DT. Yeah. Oh, 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 massive oh, oh, storm oh, oh, right on top oh, of all those Hydralisks. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. We, but Zoom we spawned locusts on all the Templars a little bit too late. I think it was a little bit too late, but man, look at all these guys. They're down to orange and red health. Just very, very damaged. Oh, and again, yes! committing massive storm again. Wow, Arthur defending very, very well here. This huge group of hiders that was 73 is down to 32. More reinforcing up from this left side, kind of jumping on top of those cannons, though, which I don't think was necessarily a good choice. Lurker's burrowing right at this front door. Arthur might actually need to back up. Is he going to lose his front door here? He is. So yeah, KSW losing a lot of hiders, but at the same time, he can't take his third base. He's going to get starved out here. If he can't move out with this army, then what's the point of having a big army in the first place? Another gateway gets sniped down by these hiders and these lurkers. Arthur needs to kill this now, and here he comes. Yep. He's oh, moving he's out. Now. Oh, oh, the observer could get sniped. Oh, nope, he doesn't snipe that. Oh, no. nice storm. Another nice storm. storm. Yep, Arthur pushing out, getting all these overlords as well. These hiders desperately running away, trying to survive. Lurker trying to morph into this base, but no, it gets canceled and ends up dead. Arthur should take a third base now. Instead, he just is probably going to go for the kill. I don't see any probes coming out for that third. Ah, there it is. Now it's coming. Woo! All right. So Queen out in the middle of nowhere gets sniped down by those zealots and those dragoons. Very, very unfortunately, what are we producing? Just more and more hydralisks. That's going to be the answer. From KSW, total number 37 Hydras are on the field. They do have fairly good upgrades at this point. It is plus two missile, nothing for the carapace. I don't know how much that helps um, against the uh, against the attacks anyway, against the storm. So, a couple more spawn locusts. Did I miss those? Yeah, a couple more spawn locusts. Either way, there's a single Templar. I don't know if he has enough energy for a storm. Pretty good splits. On these hiders, getting a bit of a concave. It is concave versus concave. Nice. The burrowing lurkers right in the middle and forcing retreat here from Arthur. Just a little bit, a bit of a reposition. Hydras, again, there are so many hydras on the field. Nine being produced, 10, 11 being produced. 
at a single time for KSW. He recognizes that they're dying, but that's oh, it. Oh, GG. Arthur calls the GG, and KSW takes game number one. Oh, wow.